Hello, hey guys, we're back with another TS video. The long-awaited Western Maryland Retro Pack for the Hanover Sub was released today, and uh, it's kind of been teased in, in, I guess, TS Media for quite some time, and I gotta say, I've really been looking forward to this, uh, because not only do I like some of the older stuff, such as, but uh, the Hanover Sub is a fantastic route uh, for anybody looking for some good North American stuff for Train Simulator. Um, so we're just going to take a quick look at it today. We're not going to do a scenario. We're going to save that for later. Uh, but like I said, it's available on Steam right now for $24.99 in American Doll Hairs. And it is the Western Maryland Railway Retro Pack. What you get is the F7A and B unit with uh, speed lettering and circus paints. You get the GP9 with speed lettering, GP35, which I would kind of say is the, the flagship of the pack, if you will, which is what we're in uh, right now. We'll get started in just a minute. With the GP35, you also get uh, speed lettering and circus paint. You get C-13A steel couple of caboose with three liveries as well. Uh, and then you get 10 types of period-specific cars and wagons and 10 scenarios. So right off the bat, I'd say that is, uh, that's, that's pretty worthwhile. I mean, that's a lot of rolling stock. And then you get the 10 period specific scenarios and I'm sure high iron is going to spit out some free scenarios as well, as well as others. But anyway, let's take a look. Uh, one of the first things I noticed as I have just opened this up for the first time is these old school train orders, which is nice. It's got that, uh, who did it? I think it was mile post simulation. Can I have this look here? But anyway, we're not going to pay too much attention about this because we're not really going to mess with the scenarios. We're just going to kind of look at the rolling stock, uh, and that's going to be today. So this is the GP35. If you, as you can see, it's uh, it's got that advanced braking script. We're in Hagerstown, and this son of a bitch is loud. Pardon my French, but it's very loud. Let me turn that down some more. Jesus. All right, so so already I'm getting notes and hints of DTM slash travel by train with this GP35, which I'm sure is, uh, you know, it, it's got to be from that. Anyway, let's not pay attention to this. It's got that sound, DTM, TBT. I mean, she is purring. The sucker's loud. Windows can be opened. Uh, I will say right off the bat, it looks a little more crisp in here. It doesn't look as muddy. Um, and it is a little heavy, as you can see. It's, it's not terribly smooth. That's Hagerstown in a nutshell um, on this route. Hagerstown is really the only area that's kind of funky with the frames. So of course, like all DTM travel by train stuff, you can open and close all the doors and windows, it would appear. Uh, let's see what we can mess with here. Let's engine start. Uh, we got a F7 coming by us. Speed lettering, there it goes. Goodbye. Let's see, number lights on. Class lights, don't need to worry about that, but they work. Platform lights, good deal. All right, let's take a look, exterior. I gotta say, one of the, the coolest things about this so far that I've noticed, just kind of looking around this far, is the period rolling stock. Got some CO, B&O, Western Maryland. Amazing. A, amazing. So this is it, GP35. Uh, this is, I think, what is this scenario called here? Black Diamonds Part 1. So of course we got two circus and one speed lettering. Um, it's not a bad looking unit. I mean, it's. I'm gonna go out on a limb and assume it's a DTM Travel by Train GP35, just with a, a fresh coat of Western Maryland paint. Uh, the chassis to me doesn't appear to be too different. Uh, it's you know it's kind of clean. 
wheels are very bright, which is a, a hallmark of DTM TBT. But I like the paint. The paint looks great. So yeah, that's the GP35. All right, let's do the horn test. Yeah, that's that old school horn. From the halls of ancient TS. It's not the worst horn, though. Um, that sounds to me like the deep DTM GP30 horn. That's the first one that comes to mind. And that's what it is. It's not a terrible horn. I don't want to sit here and just drone on about horns. But it it does have a weird quick cut if you just smash the keyboard real quick. But if you hold it, you know, it kind of fizzles out nicely. But it's not terrible. I mean, this sucker is loud as hell. It's, uh, it's almost overbearing. Let's check the lights out. You can see the number of lights are on. Platform lights on the nose. Yeah. Not not great uh, DTM looking headlighting, weird, you know. I don't know what to call it. I call it starburst. Call it what you want. Not a fan, but it's not the end of the world. Just headlights. All right. Second thing I've noticed: the sounds interior and exterior on the GP35 are no different. They're exactly the same. And it doesn't have anything to do with the window being open. That changes nothing. Anyway, let's put it in gear and run her up a bit. See how it feels. Get her under power. Instrument lights on. Cab light work. Yes, it does. The interior does not look bad on this thing, though. Not at all. Very, uh... It's a little clean, but it's... It looks... Dare I say, uh, high res, almost? Check the bell out. Can barely hear it because the engine idle is so friggin' overbearingly loud. Alright, notch one, here we go. Now, this is a pretty lengthy consist. Um, heavy ass coal train. But it, it didn't lurch forward. We're kind of creeping forward slowly, so that's cool. Hopefully it'll continue like that, not be completely overpowered. There we go, notch two. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's the loco physics so much or if it's just a really, really long, heavy coal train with three GP-35s. Run sounds are better than the idle. That, that loud droning idle sound is uh, something else. And while we're testing this out, this isn't uh, Train Sim Loco Engineering School 101. I'm, I'm going to do stupid things and speed and all that good stuff. Uh, I want to test this thing out, see how it sounds and feels. Notch 4. Got some grindage, not too bad. I just, I don't know if it's drowned out by the uh, engine sound <laughs> or what. Six. Seven. There's some of the lovely cabooses that come with the pack. F7 unit. A unit, B unit, nice. Can't wait to hop in those. And eight. Yeah, 
Yeah, so... Yeah. I'd, I'd say it's pretty average uh, train sim stock that you'd, that you'd get, um, sound-wise, for North American stuff. Let's let this run on by, take a look at these guns. Yeah, it, it would be manageable if it was just tuned down a little softer. It's uh, it's pretty hardcore, the sound of that thing. So yeah, we got some old coal guns slapped in nice, crusty, rusty Western Maryland. That looks pretty good. It's just a great looking font and logo. Speed lettering, as they call it, I guess, and the stripes. Nice. Uh, the smoke effect, the exhaust effect, don't look too bad. Um, it's not that blocky stuff that you get from the likes of, uh, let's see, GP9s. You know what I'm talking about? Let's throw some power on it, see if it changes. Not really. Alright, so that is your GP35 with some filled coal guns. We're going to hop on to something else. Let's take a look at the, uh, the old tried and true S7 units. So let's hop into that. Alright, so with my basically slick, non-existent editing skills, here we are in the F7. Uh, we hopped in the speed lettering. We are not in the circus again. This is just a random scenario with it. Uh, we're gonna, not going to worry about the scenarios at this point in time. We're just going to have a look at the stock. Uh, something else I'd like to quickly notice. Uh, on the Steam store, there is no manual, unfortunately. So you can't see all the guys and gals and companies, devs, uh, that had a hand in... Uh, this pack nor if there's anything special or specific to do with any of this stock anyway let's get into the f7 here all right i think the f7 has been touched up I, this one at least yep this is not your run-of-the-mill f7 right here in the game First off, again, I, I may be completely wrong, likely am, seat looks different. Uh, again, it looks much more crisp and sharp in here. Pop the light on. Uh, let's see, it's her sander, no window. Wah, wah. It, uh... I don't know, it, it looks a little touched up in here. Um, fresher. Oh, look what we got coming, some of the loud boys. GP35s. And that DTM squeal. Good lord. Bear with me. Look at those TOFCs, damn. Me likey. Just pause that real quick, take a look. Nice. Oh, these flat cars too, man. Good night. Old tires. Steel wheels. That looks nice. Nice. It's alright, that's not too bad. While we're out here, F7. Lovely paint. It's very dark. I can't tell uh, if there's much different about the exterior. I mean, obviously the paint's different, but uh, I am noticing right off the bat the A and the B unit look slightly different. Uh, oh, okay, it's got two B units. So... The rails are all oily and grimy, I guess. Darker. Um, 
while of course on the B unit much brighter. You probably wouldn't have crews coming to and fro like you would the uh, control units. Um, but that's kind of good. I don't know if it was something that was uh, misstepped or what, but I kind of like it. Just just adds a little variety. Not you know everything looking the exact same. Um, I don't know this this B unit. I'm digging this B unit. the The whole thing looks pretty good. It it kind of looks better than the A unit. It's uh chassis and undercarriage is really dark. I am not on the the sunny side, but it does look good though. It's striking black and gold. Got the horns painted. That's a nice touch. Like mushrooms. That's nice. That is not too shabby. Alright, we'll unpause it. Let that train roll by a bit. It sounds like the F7 already did, which, you know, going into this, you kind of expect that. We don't care, not doing the scenario, okay. Yeah, but the interior looks sharpened up. I don't, I don't know a whole lot about the development or paint side of this, but it, it looks different, it looks cleaner. And I don't mean like spick and span clean, I just mean newer fresher all right let's see if this thing has the bane that the clinchfield f7 does whereas the instrument lights do not work we'll try it with the actual button inside or switch toggle whatever you want to call it if i can find it i guess not ah i'm hitting i nothing is happening So yeah, it seems like you're you're pretty run of the mill basic F7 unit. Um, I can't even get to this down here. So this, I wonder if this was taken from the Clinchfield F7, because there's something screwy with it where the uh, instruments don't work. Or I remember when I got it on uh, Clinchfield, they worked for like a moment and they immediately went out and did not come back on ever again. It's the damnedest thing. Um, so yeah, unless there's a switch somewhere that I'm missing, uh, I'm pretty sure it's down here. Pop the headlights on. Uh, they are not illuminating, which kind of sucks. It's, uh, it's, it's just, it's not a, that it's the end of the world again. It's just you would expect them to illuminate. It's pretty basic, so that's that's why I lament on it kind of sucking. Alright, they did pop a new headlight flare on there. Uh, it's so white. It's like the headlights off of a Tesla. If that were somehow able to be uh, you know, darkened, washed out a bit, that'd be great. Yeah, that sucker is bright, but it, it's all right. It's doable, manageable. Horn check. Nice. All right. We got a new horn on the F7. It's got quite a quick loop. Um, that's a new sound, though. I'm, I'm 
fairly certain that's a new sound. That's pretty cool. Bell? I can't really tell. I'm not a massive trained bell book of knowledge person guy. But it sounds reused. That horn, if somebody else has heard that horn in the game that came with something, please do let me know. But that sounds fresh out of the oven right there. So, quick blast. So that's just popping the space bar down and back up. And then, of course, if you hold it down, it loops a bit. But, uh, man, if, if that could be edited and stretched out a bit, that'd be be all right. It sounds like at a distance. All righty. I did not check on the GP35. I like to stick my uh, head out the window like a dog. Can obviously do it here. Thankfully, there's a different sound interior, exterior wise. Let's go ahead and put some power on this thing. Sounds like regular F7 brakes. The F7, honestly, uh, just like the GP9, I think, like the engine sounds never sounded terrible, especially for their age. I mean, they, they do kind of have a loop when you're holding it in notch 8 or whatever constantly, and then you can slowly start to hear it, and then that's all you hear. It's like one of those things. The, the power handle seems different. I don't know what it is. Um, the action of it, or the design? It seems different. Maybe the color? Exhaust effects aren't bad. Uh, they look to be the same off the GP35, but they're not dynamic. Um, still sounds like the F7 exterior wise, like I said, which I thought never sounded bad, honestly. Throw some air on it, see how it breaks here. Alright, so the horn appears to be louder inside. Maybe it was the position of it in real life, I'm not totally sure. But that's not a bad sound. I like it. You can definitely tell where it's coming from. It'd be nice if it was a bit louder exterior-wise. Um, interior's fine, I guess. Old, thin, metal. Could have been that loud, realistically. Alright, so that's the F7 A and B units. Very nice. Got some more top C's back here. Man, I love these old cars. These things alone... Maybe worth it for the pack, you know. Bar the bar the locos. Old box cars. Ooh, hello, shorty. Looks nice. Got our grain cars, and they're dirty. You know, I mean, look down the side. They're dirty. That's awesome. Flat cars with some uh, pipage wood. Oh, like a dual shoot. 
bulk flower loading only that's a cool car right there nice very nice and our caboose very very nice in fact let's hop back in this thing uh, see if we can anyway with the F4 HUD just because I forget the shortcuts uh, let's see there it is all right so you get the exterior view that's yeah, the front and rear which is kind of cool because uh, honestly I like riding on these things um, on occasion I certainly do on Yellowhead Pass and the one that came with it so that's nice all right F7 a and B units and cars. We got a new horn. All right, on to the next super slick editing skills coming at you. Be right back. All right, GP9, Western Maryland. With this one, you get the speed lettering, black and gold. Again, we're not going to do the scenarios. We're going to get the orders out of our face. All right, interior. You know, I'm... I'm starting to think all of these locos were freshened up on the interior. I am 99% sure I am wrong, but there's 1% that makes me think they were. Um, they, they just... Uh, like, some of them have shine, like these handles here. I, I don't remember that in the old, uh, you know... The OG goodies. All right, window does not open. So it's just your basic uh, Kuju Jeep, I guess. That notch, yeah. Is that is that new? It looks different. At least, I don't know. It's just. All right, moving on. Let's see what else we can pop and squish and flip here. What's that? Headlights. Yep. Um, there we go. Let's see. All right. No instrument lights. I don't think there were any um, on the original one, now that I think about it. Maybe there were. Don't recall. All right, can we mess with anything up yonder here? Nope. Hop over here. While we hold up traffic. Sorry, guys. We're taking a look at a GP9. Yep, so there's nothing up there. Let's stick our head out here. Uh-huh. Head out works. Here they are. So this is what I initially saw during the uh, Hanover sub kind of first look I did of this thing sitting in Hagerstown and I was like hey now you can't you can't paint that and not let us have it <laughs> so thankfully they made this pack and uh, here we go here we have it the headlights look old yeah they uh, I guess they're the same there try a bunch of different buttons gonna try to turn the number boards on nothing's happening Yeah, it's a Jeep. It's a GP9. It looks good. They're supposed to be old, beat up. The fan works, and it is actually in the cowl, so that's a start. Okay, good deal. Alright, let's see what horn we got here. That's the default GP9 horn, is it not? I'm pretty sure it is. Again, I may be wrong. Please correct me if I am. Let's take a look at some of this rolling stock here. I like these bottom shoot grain cars. Those look amazing. I'm not even sure I just called them by their proper name due to my droolage. But those look nice. Me likey. 
C and O, nice. So there's C and O and B and O as well as Wild Mare. Got a mixed train. I'm eager to get into the uh, scenarios that come with this stuff. I really am. But we're going to save that for another time. Let's check the bell. Yep, sounds the same. Alright, let's get across the crossing and stop holding up traffic. Sally's got to get little Timmy to soccer practice. Hey, it sounds like a GP9. I never thought the GP9 sounded bad, honestly. For like some of the default stuff we get for North American Train Sim, it ain't the worst. Not by a long shot. Very guttural. Got a nice throaty growl. Thick black smoke. Is that the original smoke? I think it is, but it kind of looks like it's been softened if if you can even do that it's still uh it's still squarey jagged looking all right well if that's the same horn it has been edited because i Recall the GP9 default horn having a loop, and that thing right there just went on and on and on. There's no quick blast, unfortunately. Yeah? So, I think they tweaked some stuff. Who they are, I don't know, because there's not a manual uh, that I can look at to see such information. I hope they do add a manual at some point. That's a nice scene right there. So yeah, they're GP9s. I mean, you get a ton of stock with this pack. Ten scenarios, ten variations of retro cars, wagons, whatever you want to call them, wherever you're from, and three engines with multiple liveries. Uh, it just adds to an already fantastic add-on for North American Train Sim. Um, it's probably in my top five. Easy. Probably up top Hanover Sub. So it's awesome that there's new stuff for this because uh, well, the more the merrier, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's it. I can't really think of much else to look at. If you have any questions or would like to point something out, please do in the comments. Um, but also, I want to take a look at these scenarios real quick. So that's what we're going to do. Alright, so here we're at the career tab. Uh, let's see. So these four right here. Uh, the GP35 Circus Liver, you get diamonds or black diamonds east. Four parts. I'd imagine that's the length of the entire route. Um, let's see our GP9, the, let's see, three right here in the middle. That's your Wild Mares. Got a winter one. Uh, let's see. There's the other ones. Here we go. Mr. Maryland Train YH1. And in reading some of these I did look at before I started the video, they sound uh, highly unique, the uh, the stories behind the scenarios, because it's always fun to look that stuff up and compare it one-to-one -one and see if it actually happened and if it did, you know, how, where, when, why, all that good stuff. Um, so there's two F7As in the, that's the circus. There's the black. Yeah, so six, three, three, four. That's ten. Ten scenarios. I mean, look at this. A couple of these I've got uh, edited with my own kind of stuff in here. But that's that's a girthy, thick page for the Hanover sub. And that ain't a bad thing. Um, just final closing thoughts. Are these Locos groundbreaking? Absolutely not. Uh, they do seem to be touched up, which is nice. 
They didn't just slap a skin on them and throw them on. But I think the selling point here uh, is the rolling stock and the scenarios themselves. Um, so take that with a grain of thought. Um, but anyway, that's it. That's the Western Maryland Retro Pack. I can't wait to dig in and do some of these scenarios, uh, and we'll save that for next time. But otherwise, that's it. Uh, as always, take care, guys. Stay safe, and uh, we'll see you next time.